I want to give you three things that everybody must know, has to know, about the wind of God. When I say wind of God, I'm talking about the spirit of God. We're going to look at one passage of scripture. This is in John. John gives us an account of Jesus' life. We have four accounts, four witnesses. Usually, if we have one or two witnesses, that's good enough. We have four witnesses to Jesus' life. And we see this in John. We're going to pick it up for those who are new with us. Every time the scripture is on the screen, I want to invite you to read along with me out loud. This is John 3, verse 1. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named, is it up there? Well, why aren't you reading? Let's try it again. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, which is teacher, we know that you are a teacher come from God. No one can do these signs that you do unless God is with let me just stop and just say something here for those who, who might be new with it, haven't been here in a long time. This is a thinking church. I just want to reason with you. You can disagree with me if you like, but I want you to have reasons for doing so. This might be one of the last places on earth where we can pause and use our minds. Jesus did say, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, okay? We're just gonna reason with you for the next 25, 25 minutes. Somebody say amen. It's not gonna be 40 minutes, 25 minutes. <laughs> no one can do the things that you do unless God is with him. Verse three, Jesus answered him, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Now here it is. Now think about what we're talking about, the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is teaching us something about his spirit. The wind blows, this is verse eight, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born. Come on, help me out. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And may God bless the reading of his word. Three truths everyone has to know. Doesn't matter if you're in middle school, high school, wherever you are, how many degrees you have. If we take Jesus seriously, number one, here it is, everyone, everyone who's listening to this broadcast or in service right now, according to Jesus, everyone must be born of the wind, the wind or the spirit of God. A rebirth, uh, a being born, here it is, a being born from above or being born, what the Greek says, being born again. Now Nicodemus is, uh, is in trouble here. Uh, he's in a dilemma. Nicodemus is in, uh, I love his intellectual honesty. What are you talking about, Pastor Charlie? Did you hear him at the beginning? He said um, he's struggling because he, he, he thinks to himself, this man must be a teacher sent from God. Why? He gives us a reason. Why? Because no one can do the things that he does unless he is sent from God. Oh, how I wish today that we would have some intellectual honesty even today. Think about that. I'm struggling here because I see a person who's teaching things that does not align with the way that I have thought about God. But I just can't dismiss him because of his signs, 
He's doing things that, that not just a normal person can do. So I want to stop right here and just ask you, have you, what do you do with Jesus? Well, Nicodemus is struggling. He comes to him. Nicodemus, as we just read, was a ruler of the Jews. Very sharp. Think of someone who's, who's, who's uh, educated, been to school. He's a part of the Jewish Sanhedrin. That's the, the 70 council of elders, the, the Jewish high supreme court. Now, in our today in the 21st century in the Supreme Court, we have nine justices. You would think they're educated, smart, going to nice schools. It's in the same way in the first century. 70, sharp, intellectual people. And he's struggling here because what Jesus is saying isn't aligning with the way I was brought up. You see, how I was brought up is as long as you are a descendant of Abraham, I can trace my lineage back. I'm a part of the people of God. And as long as I keep the law as best I can, that's how I please God. And that's how I enter the kingdom of heaven. And with one statement, Jesus deconstructs his whole philosophy. He says, truly, I tell you. In fact, let's, let's look at it again. Five times Jesus says this over and over. You must be born again. You must be born of the spirit. You must be born from above. Look at verse three. It says, Jesus answered him and said, truly, truly, I say, let's just stop right there for a second. Who talks like that? (laughs) You begin a statement, truly, truly, I say, who do you think you are? Well, he was somebody. In fact, there is no other example in all of ancient literature of a rabbi using these words to begin a statement. The only time truly, truly translates the Aramaic word amen. The only time someone would say amen is when a rabbi was teaching and if you confirmed or you agreed with it, much like we do today, after he was done making a statement, someone would say amen. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. All right, all right. You see how it works? If I say something and, and you disagree with it, I can tell by your face. But, but if you agree with it, you might say something like, hey, amen. And that's what would happen then. But Jesus was somebody different. He did not need the confirmation of man. When he was speaking, he was speaking from an authority from above. So even before he made the statement, he confirmed it with an amen already. In other words, it doesn't matter if you agree with this or not, amen. Truly, I tell you, you must be born again from above by the wind, by the spirit of God. Don't marvel, he's looking at Nicodemus, don't marvel that I'm telling you this. That which is flesh is just flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So I'm going to just stop right here and ask you a question on this Easter Sunday morning where we're looking so nice. Have you been born by the spirit of God? You're here, you're alive, you're naturally, you, you, you've been born once, that's wonderful. But have you experienced a rebirth now listen to me, I'm not asking you where you go to church. I'm not asking you what denomination you are or your background. I'm not asking you who you voted for. I'm not asking you if you're a good citizen, pay your taxes, uh, or you volunteer at some organization, all those are wonderful, but I'm asking you this morning the same question that Jesus asked. Have you been born by the Spirit of God? That begs a question there in your notes. How in the world does someone know that? Now, we're a reasoning church. Hopefully, somebody's tracking with me. Well, how in the world do I know that? Let me suggest something to you. If you do not know whether or not you have been born again, if you don't know, then most likely, and I say this with all all love in my heart, I'm just reasoning with you, then most likely, it hasn't happened. 
How could you dare say such a thing? Well, do you think a, a child could be physically born without realizing that something traumatic <laughs> has taken place? In our own family, we, we, uh, we had a, a new family member come into the, the family, not our immediate family, but little Grace Lynn Aldette was born this week. I'll call her Gracie. I held her in my arms last night. Yes, some people. Yes. And do you know, just a couple of days ago, Gracie was in a nice, warm, quiet place. And all of a sudden, something traumatic, crazy happened. Uh, she, she came out of the, after some struggle, she came out of the birth canal and the, you know, the doctor smacks him and all of a sudden she cries out for the first time, opens her eyes, listen, open her eyes for the first time and, and here she is in the world and now she has the potential to be and to develop and to be all that God's called her to be. Now listen to me, while she was in the womb that that was nice for a while, but the womb gave, gives, can give a child a false sense of security. But you are not designed to stay in the womb. You are designed to achieve and to do something with your life. And that involves a birth. In the same way. Oh, I pray that you not just listen to a pastor, but you listen to the wind, to the spirit of God. In the same way. I want to suggest to you that it's impossible for you not to realize when you have been born by God. Now you say, well, well, why? Well, that leads us to the second thing that everybody has to know. You just have to know about the wind and the spirit of God. Why is that? That I would know that something happened when I've been born by the spirit of God. Number two, the wind. The reason is the wind or the spirit of God is uniquely powerful. Come on, say uniquely. Uniquely powerful. Good SAT word coming up. It inevitably, that's a great word. Let's say it together. Inevitably. It inevitably alters. Yeah, I would circle the word alter. It changes, it transforms. Never gonna be the same inevitably alters what it moves upon. In other words, sir, when you've been born by the Spirit of God, just like little Gracie is now seeing for the first time, when you're born by the Spirit of God, you start seeing things differently. I cannot go back to the old way I used to see my life. just can't the center the gravitational center the core of my life has shifted and I'll never be the same it's not that I have to go to church or I'm trying to follow these rules like Nicodemus I'm going to control this relationship with God no you can't control it it's not that I have to do these things no I want to be around other people who have been born by the Spirit of God. I, I cannot stay away from the family of God. There, there, there's a change that happens. You know, ask the people who live in the plains of Kansas if the wind is powerful. Can a tornado touch the ground without altering the landscape? You know, in the news just recently, we learned about the 1,300-foot evergreen. Did you see that in the news? Ship. And um, I cut off the news several weeks ago when we began the reef series, so I, I just have to read, read the news, and I'm reading about it. This vessel is as long as the Empire State Building. Holds 20,000, say 20,000. I want you to get you know, easily just bigger in this building. 20,000. 20 foot long connex boxes full of just cargo and shipment, making its way up through the Suez Canal, connects the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea, cuts the largest man made canal right through Egypt, and it's journeying through there. Billions of 
dollars of cargo going up through there. And as the evergreen is making its way, way up through there, a sandstorm picked up in the wind. Think about this. With all the technology we have today, the wind started to blow. And those big, those big connex boxes that were piled high, 20,000 piled high on the evergreen acted as a, as a sail. And that whole 1,300 began to shift and the nose of that, the evergreen buried itself in the bank of the canal and the other part started to bend and it blocked the entire canal for weeks. The wind, the wind, powerful. Now, in the same way, I want you to think about how powerful the spirit, the wind of God is. That which is dead, dead, can come alive. The Hebrew Bible starts out in Genesis. God made Adam from the ground, formed him, dust, but nothing was happening, lifeless. But the scripture says that God reached down and breathed into him the breath of life and Adam became a living being the scripture story doesn't stop there we know that Adam rebels and turns from God and that breath that life of God is lost but in the fullness of time many years later Jesus comes on the scene Pastor Charlie what's Jesus doing in a real way he's breathing on us again. Breathing on us again. I want you to look in your notes there on the, on the insight. What's so incredibly beneficial? In fact, if it's in your notes, read it with me if you would. What's so incredibly beneficial about accepting Christ is the availability of the What? of the Holy Spirit. We have the opportunity to live our lives like no one else can. I have the opportunity to live my life with the tangible, noticeable strength and help of God. Wow. What good, what good news. I want to share this one, Paul that, this one prayer that Paul prayed, and this is my prayer this morning. Ephesians 1.19 Look what Paul prayed. I pray that you will understand the in the what? Is it small? Is it weak? Unable to change or set free or help or restore? I pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power. For us who what? Believe in Christ. Look at this. This is, especially on Easter, this is the same mighty power that what? That raised Christ from the dead. Now listen to me. We'll stop right there. For many of us under the sound of my voice, those tuning in, what you desperately need. You've been trying a lot of other stuff. But what we desperately need, I believe, is the wind of God to begin to blow in the sails of our lives. The spirit of the living God. Now here's the tricky thing. I'm just reasoning with you. This gets tricky on this last point. Jesus said emphatically, take it to the bank. Whether you approve or not, whether you say, amen, pastor, doesn't matter. This is truth. He said, you must, you must be born by the spirit of God. Must be. But here's the, <laughs> here's the tricky part. You ready? We're not in charge of the spirit or the wind of God. Now, wait a second. 
if you're, if you're reasoning with me, that it can't be fair. Lord, you told me I had to be born again, that I, flesh can't inherit the kingdom of God. It's just flesh. I have to be born from above. But I can't make that happen. Look at number three. We cannot control the wind or the spirit of God. Can't force the spirit to move. Can't tell him to move. Can't get all worked up, do a dance, do whatever we want to do. We're not in charge of the spirit of God. Consider what Jesus said. This is John 3, 8. The wind blows. What? You didn't get it. Let's just try it again. The wind blows where? Now, hopefully you're tracking with Jesus now. He's not just talking about wind. The spirit of God blows where, wherever he wants to, wherever it pleases him. You hear its sound, but you can't tell where it comes from and you can't tell where it's going. So it is with everyone who is born by the Spirit. And with this, we're getting ready to close. Because if you're, if you're really listening and leaning in, I hope you're asking this question. Well, then what can I do? I'm telling you. The Spirit of God is one of the most incredible gifts that Jesus offers his presence and his spirit but I can't control it what can we do I want to ask you what do sailors do they really going to think how foolish this is if I do this then wind you have to start blowing I know I'm going to get out of my boat. I'm going to shout. Hey, ho, ho, hey, you. Wind, start blowing. I need to get somewhere. No, no, no. Not in charge of that. But I am in charge of some things. Tell you what I do. Uh, hey, family. Hey, hey, guys. Let's untie this boat it's been docked here too long let's set out on the get out there in the ocean and let's unfold the, the sail here and hoist it up and let's just see whether or not the wind starts to blow and when it does look out we'll be ready and we'll be able to go where we want to go so what can we do back to the question listen to me you can simply do you ready this is so you're going to say Dr. Charlie that's so deep and profound went way over my head where did you get such you, you ready we can do spiritual things and then just watch can't control it just watch the wind of God, the spirit of God begin to respond. Spiritual things. You're scratching your head. What are you talking about? Well, one of them's right now. God's house is a great place to start sailing your ship, your boat of life. Spiritual things. Lord, I'm coming to your house. I'm giving you an opportunity to, to breathe into my life. Some of us we, become, we can lift our hands to the Lord. Some spirits. How about some, think about some spiritual things you could do? How about praying? Lord, I want to start. I've got my Bible. That's a spiritual thing. I can start, Lord, reading your word. Or for some of us, I was praying for you. Some of us need to get on our knees. Not just literally, but in your heart. You know what scripture promises? If you repent, I'll. Times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. Repent. What in the world does that mean? Lord, I turn back to you. God, forgive me. This is something spiritual. God, forgive me. I've been away too long. 
I draw near to you. We have a whole bunch of folks today, this is something spiritual, being baptized. In every single service, people just coming and being baptized, washing away the old and something new. So what's going to happen? The wind of God, the spirit of God, the help of God is being blown into the house. In fact, let's, let's just get right to that moment. I, folks, I want you to cel- let's celebrate those who are being baptized. Let's just, would you bow your heads right now and I'm going to pray. We'll continue the service and I'll come up afterwards and dismiss us. Lord, it's good to be in your house. Good to be with your people. Lord, I thank you for the promise, all those who come to you. Call on your name, look to you, run to you, yield to you. It's your great joy to pour out your presence, your spirit, your water, your fire, your oil. And now, Lord, breathe, I pray, breathe. Lord, I pray, Lord, there's someone in the sound of my voice who's been trying to get, they can't get there. But today's resurrection day, today's miracle day, today's a new day for them by the Spirit of God. Lord, I pray that they have the grace to take the next steps, to do what they know to do. And Lord, I thank you that you respond. In Jesus' name. Come on. In Jesus' name. All of us said, amen. Amen. God bless you. What a great Come on. message from Pastor Charlie. Listen, if at any point during the service you wanted yeah. to take a next step, now's your time. Don't miss this moment. Yeah. We have our hope team ready and waiting to pray with you. Yeah. All you need to do is text the word CONNECT to our church phone number on the screen and our HOPE team Come will on. be with you right now. That's right. Look, so many of you have been partnering with us financially and we just want to say thank you. Yeah. Through your partnership, we are able to help so many people. Look, if you want to partner with us today and take that step, uh, the easiest way to do that is to text the word GIVE right. to our church number here on the screen. Look, we're so glad you joined us for Easter. Hope you enjoyed the service, the experience, and we hope that you make plans to be a part of our services next week, 9.30 and 11 a.m. right here in our building, or you can join us online at any time. Invite your friends and family, and we'll see you back next week.